Hey team, and welcome to another video in the Astrological Magical Elections video series. Today we're going to talk about magical elections that are going to be available to us between the Leo New Moon on August 18th until the Pisces Full Moon on September 2nd. So even though the skies are kind of crappy right now, we do have a few examples of some decent magical elections to choose from. Uh, one thing to note is that some of the elections that we're going to talk about today are actually going to be a little bit different in how they look, sort of how they're formatted, than how my elections normally look. And this is actually kind of a really good opportunity to kind of talk about why that is. So in doing these videos and making these elections and, you know, showing them to everybody, I always try to err on the side of caution. So I always try to choose charts that are set up to be, you know, more potent, um, less complicated, you know, kind of as ideal as I possibly can, because the idea is that I'm trying to get people to, you know, to start practicing. And so I try to use charts that are kind of as best as they can be to kind of take out any sort of controversy and make them, you know, sort of as easy as possible. Um, but of course, you know, limiting yourself like that takes out a lot of potentials. And so it's really times like these where, you know, the planets aren't necessarily positioned in such a way to be very helpful or conducive to what we're trying to do, where, you know, taking those training wheels off and kind of showing other ways that you can set charts um, or sort of like other criteria you can keep an eye on to, you know, may have usable charts is a really good, you know, thing to do. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. And just to kind of cover it very basically, I guess, typically whenever I do magical elections, I always try to have the moon, you know, in an angular house in the first or the 10th houses. Those are the best houses for her to be in. Um, so this, this is more specifically to lunar mansion talismans. Um, so typically you want the moon to be in the first or 10th house, very close to the center of the midheaven. And that's sort of like the ideal moon position. So that's usually where I shoot for the downside of that is because we have so many planets kind of incapacitated right now, the number of ascendant signs we can really utilize is very, very low. Like right now, Mars is square Saturn, so Aries and Scorpio are out. Um, Jupiter is retrograde, so Sagittarius and Pisces are out. Saturn is retrograde, so Capricorn and Aquarius is out. Saturn and Mars are in configurations toward the later parts of Cancer and Libra are out. So really your focus then becomes Taurus and Libra, the parts that you can use of Libra. Uh, Leo, Virgo, and Gemini. Those are really the only, sign, the only signs in the ascendant that you can have right now for one reason or another. So that means that, you know, the moon can't just be in those signs to be angular. Uh, so you have to utilize other houses. So while the ascendant and the midheaven are really the places where I aim for the moon to be in the lunar mansion talisman election charts, um, she can be, you know, anywhere within the first or tenth houses, and those are her ideal positions, the most ideal houses. Uh, kind of a step down from that would be the 11th and the 9th and the 5th houses would be other really great houses for her to be in. Uh, even the third house would be good. Uh, and the second house is sort of like right there on the line of okay versus not okay. Uh, but houses where you definitely don't want the moon to be in in an, in an electional talisman is the 12th, the 6th, the 8th. Uh, the 4th is okay-ish. Uh, it has kind of a lot of somewhat negative connotations to it, uh, but it also is sort of this place where the moon is starting to rise up. Uh, so it can have it can be useful in certain situations as well. I wouldn't really count it very much. And then the 7th house is another house you don't really want the moon in because we have that setting motion involved. So as we look through some of these charts, we'll see the moon uh, in, a, you know, in a couple of different places than normal. Uh, I think she's in the fifth house in a couple of these charts, and that's totally fine. It's just a little bit different because we're trying to get certain ascendant signs. So let's go ahead and get started. The first electional uh, opportunity we're going to talk about today is on August 21st at around 9.45 a.m., and this is in the North American continent. And here we have kind of our more typical situation where we have the moon uh, on the ascendant, and here she's placed in the uh, in the 15th lunar mansion and is applying kind of you know loosely a square to venus in cancer in the 10th house and this is of course a uh, an example of mutual reception uh the moon is in libra venus is sign venus is in cancer the moon sign and the moon is immediately applying an aspect for her that's very important in reception and this is an example of a 15th lunar mansion chart so we have the moon here in the ascendant in the 15th lunar mansion um and the 15th lunar mansion is one that we use for uh it can be used to help with friendships and you know help to develop and foster relationships that are you know, of course positively oriented uh ones that will help you grow as a person ones that will you know support you kind of like your true blue friendships um it's also useful for the accumulation of financial resources if that's something that you're in need of um and kind of finally it's also useful for manipulating reputation and public opinion so it can be really great for somebody who's you know trying to make a good name for themselves especially if somebody is kind of like just getting started in you know really any kind of field or you know even if you've been in the field for a while and you uh kind of want to 
you know, increase your increase people's awareness of you, your kind of brand recognition and associating that um, with positive things, kind of calling attention to the positive things that you have done. This can be a really great, um, a, a really great talisman for any of those three things, uh, you know, to help you make new friends, uh, to help you be more secure in your finances or to, you know, kind of help shape a positive public opinion about yourself. The ruler of the first house in this chart, of course, because we have Libra rising, is Venus, and Venus is unafflicted at this point in time uh, by either the opposition of Saturn or the square of Mars, but this is, of course, going to get closer and closer as we move forward in time, so Venus is going to kind of drop off as a potential planet to utilize in ritual practice. What I would not do, though, is I would not recommend um, making this talisman with a Virgo ascendant, uh, because then you'll be looking at Mercury and Virgo, and while that might seem like the better option initially, uh, Mercury is combust the sun at this point in time, and you don't want that um, symbolism to be involved or, you know, kind of woven into the talisman as the representative of the first house. So definitely shoot for early Libra, leave behind late Virgo. So our next electional opportunity still in the North American continent is for August 30th at around 11.30 p.m. Um, and here we are shooting for a 25th Lunar Mansion Talisman. And this is one that I don't think that we've spoken about before. Um, but here we have the moon placed, uh, you know, on the midheaven in the 24th Lunar, or I'm sorry, the 25th Lunar Mansion. Um, and here she's kind of applying a, a little bit of a distant sextile to Mars in Aries. Um, and so the 25th Lunar Mansion is primarily uh, about gardening. Uh, it's about the uh, protection and uh, it's about the protection of crops. So on the one hand, you can take that symbolism very literally and you can, you know, use this talisman specifically for, you know, help in gardening, help in protection of plants, um, especially if you're somebody who uses plants either, you know, medicinally, you know, like you grow your own or you use them, you know, in commerce, you grow and you sell them one thing or another. But you can also take that and use it as a metaphor instead of like literal crops it can be you know money because oftentimes you know farmers of course sell their crops for money that's how they make their living um so a lot of times when we're talking about talismanic magic for and they talk about like agriculture and farming you literally can use that for agricultural and farming perfectly fine or you can kind of shift it a little bit to be more like financial assets since it's usually where we're getting at anyway mars is of course not normally a planet you would look to when it comes to you know successfully raising crops um because his nature is a little bit you know opposite but because mars is um in domicile in aries this might be a situation where you specifically are you know working to help bring up mars type plants you know kind of weaving his own personal brand of plant signification into the talisman itself can be a really great idea um, another thing that uh, the 25th lunar mansion can do is it's useful for the protection of travelers uh, and so you can also use this that way if you want, you know, assistance and protection while traveling, make things a little bit easier, definitely an option. Um, and you can actually kind of play with this a little bit. So, you know, you can either use it as a, uh, as a situation where you have Taurus rising on the Ascendant uh, and get Venus and Cancer as the ruler of the first house. And this might be the better option if you're wanting to do the talisman for finances or for, you know, helping growing plants. Keep in mind, though, that we are pulling in this Mars square with that. So that might not actually be the best option to utilize in this in this election your other option is if you wanted to wait you can actually do it with uh, with gemini rising and then you would get uh, mercury and virgo as the ruler of the first house that situation is probably a little bit better for like traveling for protection while traveling but you know if you wanted to still use it for the health of gardens and you know the health of plants and having a you know a miracle grow talisman basically you can still use it that way but i think this energy is a little bit more finely tuned into the traveling aspect of it all right, so our next magical election opportunity is actually going to take us to Western Europe. And here uh, it's going to be August 22nd at around 10 a.m. And this is where kind of the charts start to look a little bit different. Uh, here you can notice that the moon is actually not right on the ascendant like she normally is in my election charts. Um, here she's placed um, at the very beginning of the 16th lunar mansion. And she is applying that square uh, to Venus in Cancer still. Venus ruling the first house uh, in the election chart itself. Um, and so while the uh, North American continent version of this chart was a 15th lunar mansion talisman, this is a 16th lunar mansion talisman in Western Europe because the moon has advanced far enough to pass into the next mansion. Um, 
So the 16th Lunar Mansion is one that I'm not sure we've spoken about before, but this one is very much a transactional mansion. It's very much about business relationships um, and commerce specifically. So if you are an individual who is, you know, setting up shop on the internet to sell things like actual commerce, actual selling merchandise, this is going to be a good mansion t for you uh, to get a hold of because it will help you, you know, do better. It will help you perform better sales. Um, so definitely consider this one. It, this is like this this whole cardinal bullshit is really kind of frustrating uh, because you have kind of this this moon uh, you have this moon Venus square which is great which is great because it's with mutual reception kind of like on the very periphery of this Mars Saturn massacre over here um, so they're kind of close ish to it to where you start worrying about it but not close enough. To be like, oh, okay, this is probably going to be a situation that we have to that we have to worry about uh, because these are you know twelve degrees apart, so it's not really within orb yet to worry about. But like I said, it's like just on the periphery there, so it's always a thing. You know, you always have to watch out for where the malefics are placed, um, but especially when they start getting within orb, is where you have to kind of consider whether or not it's worth it. You should basically like cut your losses about. But here, I don't think we're there yet. So if you, you know, are interested in a 16th Lunar Mansion Talisman, if you're interested in a way to, you know, especially if you already have a setup online to where you are currently selling things, this can be really great to get a boost uh, in those sales. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about the the malefic interference at this point in time. I, I That being said, I also wouldn't uh, invest very heavily in this specific talismanic collection uh, because they are there kind of on the periphery, you know, like don't invest a whole lot of stuff into it. You know, just keep it like a very simple paper talisman or something that is that doesn't cost a whole lot to make uh, because there will be better options for this once uh, Mars and Saturn move into uh, Taurus and Aquarius and kind of are we get more breathing room in this section of the zodiac. The cardinal signs can breathe a little bit easier after that. So our next magical election opportunity, still in Western Europe, is going to be for an 18th Lunar Mansion Talisman. And the 18th Lunar Mansion is, you know, kind of a fun one. It's very health-oriented uh, in, in a very specific way. Health-oriented, it's very devouring. Um, and here, you know, we kind of have a little bit of a different setup than we normally do uh, to get it because, like I said, um, we can't have... Uh, the moon in Scorpio on the Ascendant, because that takes us to Mars as the rule of the first house, and Mars is currently square Saturn, so that's a no. Um, and then having Scorpio on the Midheaven in this chart puts Sagittarius on the Ascendant, um, and Sagittarius points us to Jupiter, who is retrograde and kind of close to the conjunction of Saturn, so that's a no-go as well. So we go for uh, a late Leo Ascendant to get the Sun as the rule of the first house, um, going to, you know, I don't recommend moving into Virgo Ascendant for this chart because then you're switching to Mercury in Virgo and while being in domicile is great, being combust the sun is not. Uh, so we're definitely going to skip that. We're going to stick to the late Leo Ascendants um, to keep uh, the sun as the ruler of the first house as much as we can. And here we have the moon placed in the third house, a cadent house, which is usually not that great, uh, but the third house is the house of the moon's joy, so we can utilize it. It's probably, you know, really the, the best of the cadent houses to use for this reason uh, in this context. And at this point in time, the moon is applying a trine to Venus in Cancer in the 11th house. So the 18th Lunar Mansion is a little bit different in its healing modality than the 10th Lunar Mansion, which is really my favorite one to use. The 10th Lunar Mansion is a bit more about, you know, protection and prevention. Uh, whereas the 18th Lunar Mansion is more about healing the sickness, if that makes sense. So the 18th Lunar Mansion is one that you utilize when you're already ill and you want to get better. And the 18th Lunar Mansion is more specifically uh, indicated for illnesses of the stomach, which depending on, you know, your medical philosophy is can be the originator of, you know, most illnesses that people experience. So uh, even though it sounds very limited, it may have more... Uh, breadth than we initially think that it's capable of. And what the 18th Lunar Mansion does is it sort of like specifically hunts down and consumes the illness. It has like a very serpentine uh, image associated with it. And so it kind of has that like predator seeking and destroying kind of action to it. So the 18th Lunar Mansion is good to use if you're sick and you want to get better and then you should uh, dispose of the talisman. You're done with it after you, know, you are better from whatever your issue was. And then, of course, taking a look back at the election, we've got the sun as the rule of the first house, like I said before, um, unafflicted by Mars or Saturn, so, you know, very safe. Uh, and even Venus is, you know, she's getting into this opposition of Jupiter, which isn't too terrible. Um, she's still far enough away from this opposition of Saturn, and um, she's not yet within orbit of the square of Mars as well, so we're still pretty good there. 
And then finally for Western Europe, they also have that 25th Lunar Mansion election chart that we talked about for um, North America with the exact same setup uh, where you have the moon uh, conjoined the midheaven in the 25th Lunar Mansion and she's applying that sextile to Mars in Aries. It's, it's very far out. The sextile is quite far out, and this kind of gap in lunar transmission and lunar aspect is really not ideal. This is classically a void, of course, moon. Um, and so you typically would avoid them, I think, in most magical elections because they have a sense of f like flow disruption almost. It's like a story is being written, and then there's just like several blank pages in the book before the story picks back up again. Um, that's kind of the, the, the motion or the energy that Void of Course Moons bring with them. There's like an interruption, there's a delay, things just don't kind of flow naturally before. It's like, yo, it suddenly picks back up again. Um, so that can be an issue to consider uh, whether or not you would or wouldn't want to use this talisman. Uh, it kind of has like a, a little bit of a dead period to it before we see some signs of progress, uh, which isn't, you know, too much unlike, you know, a seed being planted. You know, you don't really see it. Uh, you, know, you, know, you don't see any growth or development on the surface. It's all happening under the ground, um, and you, you, know, you can't see it there. And then suddenly, one day, you notice a sprout has, you know, you notice there's a sprout out of the ground. You're like, oh, it was, you know, working all along. That can be another way that the photo course moon manifests. So something to consider in this. It's not ideal. I typically wouldn't recommend it, but you can work with it just as long as you realize that you're going to be delayed a little bit in what you're, what you're going to get. So you keep that in mind. And this 25th Lunar Mansion Talisman was the one that was about, you know, safety and traveling or the growth of crops, which is why I use the, the seed metaphor for this one. And for this one, just like the North American one, you can choose either between the Taurus Ascendant or the Gemini Ascendant. The Gemini Ascendant is probably more preferred because you're not dragging in the Mars Square at the same time. But hey, it's an option if you want to use it. Um, but I do think the Mercury, uh, the, the Gemini Ascendant with the Mercury Ruler is, is the preferred one. So that was all that we had for Western Europe and now switching gears to Australia where we do have another couple of electional opportunities. One we've seen before and another one will be different. Um, and our first electional opportunity is for August 22nd at around 8.30 in the morning. And here we have uh, that 15th Lunar Mansion talisman. Uh, for the election itself, we have the moon in the 15th Lunar Mansion on the Ascendant, applying that square to Venus and Cancer that we're so used to seeing by now, uh, with the Venus, with this Venus and Cancer as the ruler of the first house, currently unafflicted by the opposition of Saturn or the square of Mars, which is great. And this is that um, election that is good for either uh, reputation management um, or to help uh, improve the quality of friendships and meet new people who are going to be supportive and helpful or uh, to help with financial difficulties, or all three. If you need all three, you know, pull the trifecta, that's really fine too. Um, and this is gonna be for that. The same considerations as the as the North American version, you know, keep the Libra Ascendant, don't do Virgo Ascendant, and you'll be golden. Our final electional opportunity we're gonna talk about today, still in Australia, is uh, gonna be August 29th at around 6.30 in the morning. And this is going to be for a 23rd Lunar Mansion Talisman. And this is one I don't think we've ever talked about before. And we do have a couple of options on how you want to play it. Uh, the 23rd Lunar Mansion is called the Luck of the Swallower or the Luck of the Devourer. Um, and what we're going to use it for is to heal illnesses. So kind of just like the 18th Lunar Mansion for Western Europe, this is going to be that equivalent more or less for Australia. So there are two main uses of the 23rd Lunar Mansion that we're going to lean into for this one. Um, the first is that it can heal illness, um, and like I said, uh, the, the mansion's title is the Luck of the Swallower. So it has that kind of very devouring energy to it in a way very similar to the 18th Lunar Mansion. Um, and this is a mansion that you would use, you know, if you're sick to heal, to get something out of you because it's going to be, you know, swallowed up basically by the spirit and taken care of. That's the idea. That's what we want. The second application is that the 23rd Lunar Mansion is for the freeing of captives. So, you know, obviously this was meant specifically for individuals who were like literally in captivity, you know, for their relatives to make to help them escape or flee um, or, you know, to shorten their prison sentences or just all kinds of things like that. And you can definitely use this talisman like that if somebody that you know is currently incarcerated or you know undergoing legal troubles to where prison time might be a potential punishment you can definitely create this talisman to help mitigate that or avoid that po uh, possibility don't think that you can't use some of these more like quote old-timey applications for these talismans because they do still work today 
So you can definitely use the 23rd Lunar Mansion for its more on-label, we'll say, uses for freeing captives, whether that's literal captives who are in prison or who are facing you know, legal difficulties to where prison time is a possible punishment. It can be used to help mitigate or avoid that. Or it can be uh, in ways that we don't typically think of people as being captives, such as you know, in abusive households or in abusive relationships, people who are afraid to leave. It can be people who keep themselves captive, either through some sort of bad habit or self-destructive tendency. There's really a lot of ways you can work with this, and that's why I, I'm really that's why I really like the 23rd Lunar Mansion when it comes up it's liberating you know through destruction so something has to end for you to be free and that can be very nice in a lot of ways as long as you kind of aim it appropriately so looking at the chart here um, I've kind of chosen Leo ascendant and looking to the Sun as the rule of the first house while the moon here in the fifth house is in the 23rd Lunar Mansion and applying the sextile to Mercury in Virgo Mercury is unafflicted it's far enough away from the Sun to not have to worry about being combust and they are not, you know, in a bad aspect with uh, Mars or Saturn. So we're, you know, we're totally fine there. And there's options for this one too. If you prefer, you can use the Leo Ascendant and keep the Sun as the ruler of the first house. Totally fine. Or uh, if you want, whoops, not that far. Or if you want a little bit kind of more in a, like, in a little bit more like internal power to it, you can definitely shoot for the, uh, the Virgo Rising if you wanted get uh, Mercury as the ruler of the first house instead and get that power by dignity. Just make sure that the moon isn't past Mercury. You should be fine throughout the entirety of Virgo rising. Make sure Mercury doesn't go into the 12th house. So those were all the magical elections that we have um, g happening for us for North America, Western Europe, and Australia. There's one other thing that I did want to talk about really quickly. So in North America, we do have an opportunity for a Mercury talisman, um, and it's complicated, <laughs> we'll say. Mercury talismans are often very difficult to make anyway, just because of Mercury's very special relationship with the sun. Mercury cannot be more than 27 degrees distant from the sun, but 15 degrees of those 27 have, you know, kind of problems associated with them. So if the Mercury is from zero to seven and a half degrees away from the sun, it's considered to be combust, and that's a no-go. Um, there's no possible way to make a good Mercury combust talisman. It just doesn't work out very well. It's not good times. Unless you're in a very, very special circumstance where you can do a Mercury Kazemi talisman where Mercury is within 17 minutes of the sun, knock yourself out. But if it's past 17 minutes and you know to seven and a half degrees, no. From seven and a half degrees to 15 degrees, we have what's called uh, being within the beams or being under the beams of the sun. And this is not as inherently destructive as being combust. So from like the seven and a half degrees out to maximum elongation tends to be fine for Mercury talismans. But the problem is that Mercury moves so goddamn fast that you can't catch it half the time. But we do have a situation where Mercury kind of checks all the boxes where the chart looks very good for a Mercury talisman. But the problem is the chart only lasts for a couple of minutes. <laughs> so, you know, just like Mercury, perfect. So this is the chart for that. And it's for August 28th at around eight in the morning. And we've got the moon here in Capricorn applying the trine uh, to Mercury in Virgo, who is just on the ascendant. And this is for like the very first, the very first minute of the Mercury hour on that Friday morning. Um, and you can see why the, there's a problem. Mercury is at 15 degrees Virgo and the ascendant is at 19 degrees Virgo. Like we literally have, you know, one and a half more degree before Mercury has become cadent and is no longer usable in an election. So if you have some sort of situation where you can make something for this Mercury talisman very, very quickly, then yes, you know, I think that you absolutely should do it. But if you're, you know, in a situation where you can't do something very quickly, you can't wrap something up or, you know, finalize it, um, then I, it's probably not going to be worth it. Um, and this is just kind of like the problem with Mercury talismans in general. It's just very hard to get it, to get everything down because Mercury is only in a sign for a very short amount of time unless they turn retrograde or something like that happens. You can, of course, aim for less perfect Mercury talismans where, you know, you, you'll give up like the, uh, give up the Mercury hour or Mercury day if you want. I wouldn't recommend giving up the moon application, uh, but you can give up the Mercury day an hour. Uh, it's going to be less potent, but that's, you know, it's that or nothing a lot of the times, and that's totally fine too. So those are all the astrological elections. Uh, so those are all the magical elections that I have to share with you guys. We're getting really close to the end of the Jupiter and Saturn retrograde cycles. So they're about to station direct. 
Um, so hopefully very soon the signs of Sagittarius, Pisces, Capricorn, and Aquarius will open up for us to be able to utilize more. I guess Capricorn and Aquarius won't open up so much because of the Sat or the Mars Saturn square, uh, but we'll at least get Jupiter for a little bit until um, Jupiter gets close to the conjunction of, of Saturn. We'll, we'll kind of lose it again, but for a little bit there, we'll have some more options available to us. Um, but you know, until then, everybody take care, and I'll see you guys again on the Pisces full moon.